Anasi, Alleluia, Anasi, Alleluia, Jehovah, Meliwo, Meliwo, Tibonsi, Biliwo, Anasi, Alleluia, Shake yourself in the Holy Ghost, Every shackle is breaking off you, Go! Every time I hear your voice, <laughs> there's a light hi, 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 that I see. It's kind of a yokoma liar.
alive Have we time this song it came at the first album called Sun Talk and there was a narrative to it he said sometimes your mother does not know what to say in prayer and many times in the kitchen daddy has done something to mommy and mommy has lost her words so while she's cleaning the place hmm So this is actually groanings which cannot be uttered. I know some of you like the melody, but it's an opportunity to groan. Yeah. 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 forgotten but as you grow I speak in tongues in the Holy Ghost by Spirit Christ hello Philip Philip and Sandra join me I speak in tongues in the Holy Ghost my Spirit Christ hello
speak in tongues. Oh. I speak in tongues. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. And my spirit cries out. My spirit cries out. Hello, he. Hello, he. I speak in tongues. Oh. I speak in tongues. In the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost. And my spirit cries out. My spirit cries out. Hello, he. Ya 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 
God moves high. You are Jesus Christ. You are Eloisael. You are Lion. God moves high. You are Jesus Christ. You are Eloisael. You are Lion. Shout of praise. You may be seated. Give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Are you excited for today? This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. It's such a blessing. Are you excited at all? Oh, I'm not feeling you excited. Are you sure you're excited? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The 
The Lord is my light and the light of my life. I shall not be afraid. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. And the light of my life. I shall not be afraid. Why? words upon my lips show me how I should fear why should I be afraid listen listen he said though walls and rumors of wars a thousand on our right ten thousand on our left side he said yet no evil shall come near us we are entering the generation of people that know their God do you think Hamas and Israel is a folk tale? Something is about to hit the earth. Every battle of the nation will come at Israel. And it's time for men to read the signals. He said, ye hypocrites, know ye not when summer is nigh. Summer is nigh. And it is important where you stand with God. Enough of commercial Christianity. It's time to go deep with him. Because in the day you meet him, you realize the car was not important to God. A house was not important to God. As long as it didn't assist his purpose, it was as useless as this material realm. But something is coming. The Lord is my light and the light of my life. I shall not be afraid. Let them declare new corona is coming. The Lord is my light. A new lockdown will not scare us. Light of my life. A new COVID vaccine will not scare us. I shall not be afraid. Why will not we be scared? He says, I got the spirit in my heart. And this word is on my lips. I will not fear. Why should I be afraid? struggling with light has come burdens are lifted higher light has come light has come burdens are lifted
Listen. You don't understand what we are singing. Um, our dear Sandra received the song from God. When I heard the song, I heard angels singing it. And apparently, it's one of the songs angels sing when people accept revelation. Yes. yes. It's that the Lord sent his word. It's lighted on Israel. It, there's a lighting. <laughs> there's a lighting. And the light of Israel shall be for fire. And it burns the tongues and the thistles in one day. So when you are singing that song, Aish, it's not doing you, it's beholding. So when we say, light has come, bed is a Light has come, bed is a Now, let me help some people. I, I know, I see, some of you are waiting for Baba Delvan. He's about to land. Uh -huh. Something happened to his flight. So he's about to land. And the time of his flight, something happened around it. So I'm sure by the time he's landing, we are closing service. But listen to this. Tomorrow evening, we are here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this one, it is called the service of... Uh, now, if I, say, if I use the word, I've not insulted you. The service of the wise virgins. You understand? <laughs> So if you don't come, it doesn't mean you're a foolish virgin, but I'm just telling you that. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know how to say that. It's like I, it's a galamse service. <laughs> you're a galamse person. So tomorrow Baba is coming. I mean, yeah. It's no joke. He's he's landing. You know, he took a flight. The people gave him a wrong this thing, so he couldn't catch it. He had to drive from Kaduna to Abuja, then Abuja, so he missed it. He had to now, so he now fly to Lagos so he can make it today. And I said, Baba, please. The last time we saw you was post-COVID. Yeah. Who remembers? Yeah. I think February 2020. 2020. So today I was praying. The Lord said, be careful that man come, doesn't come and announce another call. call. Yeah. 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 So, so his coming might not be, it's not a joke. Hallelujah. In fact, he honored me and my wife by saying that if it is Mama D's birthday today, he was coming to surprise us. That's why it was an impromptu invitation. Uh, I know if we had done a powerful invitation here, every, everywhere, back overflow. But you see, I taught you permissive and perfect will of God. God allowed it like this for an arrangement. That's why in everything you give thanks. It's not your plan, it's his plan. What do you think? If you like, come. If you like, don't come. If you like, squeeze your face. Like that's come. serious song to the angels. When light doesn't come, you and the angels are fighting over the bed. He said, be anxious for nothing. But you say you want to be anxious for something. And the angels are like, he doesn't have light. The angels, they are, they are relieving you of the load. You too, say you want to keep it. So the angels said, they, they don't understand. Do you know the shocking thing? He said, learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So he's taking off beddings by light and giving you a light bedding. Light has come. Beddings are lifted. Aye, aye.
Thank you so much. Now, let me show you something. Last week, I, I was explaining something to you about the thing I'm doing. I'm even receiving anointing from God. Yeah, I'm coming from administration since morning. Uh huh. So, I think I'm minister for four hours, eh? From 12 to 4, four o'clock. Yeah. So, and so I, I was really believing more than you. That somebody, because I didn't prepare. <laughs> I didn't prepare the message to preach. I'm, light has come. <laughs> well, let me be honest with you. This is our house. Oh, it's, it's, it's somebody's house. Yeah, this is not international. We are not doing a special. It's, it's our house. And Baba is coming. So let's announce so that other people can enjoy. So it's our house. We are just, we are his people. So we, are, we just flow like that. Uh -huh. These are people. Where, in fact, if you see many chairs here, you know, my father, Dr. George, was coming. Pastor Isaiah even came and left. They were all coming. These are people who really admire this man of God. So they were all coming. That's why you see special dignity chairs here. So tomorrow they are coming back. Yeah. Are you understanding? So tomorrow tell your boss that uh, you have running stomach. <laughs> so you want to go home early so that uh, light has come. <laughs> so that you can... <laughs> Tomorrow, exactly 5.30, we have, start, we have started. Okay, so that because it's a working day, we can close early and get home to work. So please run away from your office early. Uh, thank God on Mondays there are no traffic. Please miss, don't miss it. Some people heard, they thought we are joking. Uh, we'll do a video after here. We're going to meet at the airport. We'll do a video, we'll put it live. So you know that the person is, this is a human being. Uh, the moment you put that one out, you know that it's a jam something. So make sure you are here tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a powerful time. Let me just tell you something quickly. Uh, you can't come to the presence of God without hearing the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. I got I to gotta, I gotta show you what God is saying. Now, I told you that, I told you that um, in many of the prophetic words we gave that, you know, there's something about to hit the earth and Israel is the precursor. I, I told you when I preached on COVID, I taught you on the calendar of the end times. I told you that COVID was a dress rehearsal. And there's a battle coming. I told there was a battle going to come. And the battle will be between Gaza, Philistine, and the, that's the Palestinians are connected to the Philistines and, and Israel. There's going to be a fight. And when that fight intensifies, somebody will appear who is trying to broker peace. The Bible says that the moment the church is raptured, that man will be revealed. That, <clears throat> no, those who remember the calendar, I gave you, I said 2023 will test the waters. And I told 2025 will do something. I told you 2025 is seven years to 2032. Because AD 32 is connected to the birth of the church. When the church is 2000, something remarkable will happen on the earth. And I gave you 2048 connected to the Israeli anniversary of independence. Don't joke. Oh. The way light has come. All you are doing is looking for husband, wife, children. and that, That's all you are thinking about. Hmm. There's... <laughs> hmm. There's a tree song we used to sing. Edameko Soro. That means that, you see, when you are getting to heaven, there is something to go and give to the Father. The Bible says, his inheritance in the saints. There is an investment in you you must present the day you appear in rapture. Ask yourself, what is it you present to God? Some of you say, I came. The Lord said, <laughs> he said I, I am here. At least I'm, I'm here. And don't suffer loss in the next age. Don't suffer loss. Because you see, the next age has no calendar that you say, oh, prophet, prophet Nana, please come to the front, please. Can we celebrate prophet Nana? Ascension prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. That's the man of Kratos. <laughs> Amen. So, I told you that what we are about to enter into, there is a breed of Christians the world is expecting to see. And that breed of Christians are men and women. Listen, everything we are learning about the cross is important for the next phase. We are entering a phase where God is going to deal with us as mature sons. That means there are some things we will pray for God to take away. God will say, I won't take it away. 
No, did you hear what Jesus was told? He said, Lord, if it's possible, take this cup. God said, it won't go. This cup, you, you eat. There's a realm God does not negotiate with you. He will force you to collect the cup. Oh, yes. Yes. There's a realm like that. You, you say, God, I don't want. God said, you must. And that is the realm where the Bible says, if we're able to suffer with him, then we shall reign with him. But I told you last week that the sufferings is not the death on the cross. So we are not talking of going back to the cross, bearing, no. I'm talking of the way Jesus lived. You see, the expanse of Jesus' capacity was limited to the opportunity to suffer. So he learned obedience through the many things he suffered. That means Jesus could have immediately broken character and decided that I won't do again. It don't do. I won't do again. The, the moment he says it don't do, everything in heaven must answer to him. Because even when he was going to enter the desert to be tempted, he told the angels not to assist him. That is why if you read the scripture, there's a very remarkable statement that implies he fasted without angelic assistance. He said after the 40 days, angels came to minister to him. It means for 40 days he had no angelic ministration. It was after they came. It means before there was no assistance for Michael or anybody. He was there alone. Because there are some things your body must endure for the glory to be revealed. And I told you last week that the endless expectation of the creation, waiting the manifestation of the sons of God, is preceded by 18. For we reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory to be revealed. There's a glory to be revealed. And that glory is what creation is expecting. That men and women will light upon the precipice of God. Men, you see, and suffering is for the flesh. You need to understand, suffering is for the flesh. Lack of money is for your flesh. Lack of beloved is for your flesh. You see the way you react all the time. It's your flesh. Because think about it. I always give you this example. A lot of you would not pray certain prayers if you are on an island. Hmm. If you stand on an island, some of you not ask even for children. You'll be fine. You feel like, oh, it's okay. Wow. If you were staying on an island, some of you will not even think of marrying. That means some of you are even marrying because of society and peer pressure. It has nothing to do with revelation. It's not revelation. It's just, oh, everybody is marrying. So I'm a, who told you that? <laughs> so he says, I reckon. It's a, it's, a, it's a spiritual mathematics. I am doing a mathematics to realize that something is going on in my body. No wonder the apostle said something. He said, though our outward one is perishing. 2 Corinthians 4, 16, 17. He said, our inward man is renewed. There is, there is a spiritual harnessing system that requires the external to perish. And the external to perish requires carrying cross. Now, Jesus made a very remarkable statement in Matthew 16, verse 25, 26. Let's go there. And I'm doing precursor to, you know, the crucified life. The crucified life. In fact, if you understand the crucified life, you understand why Paul said, I do not make the grace of God vain. It means without crucifixion, you frustrate grace. Grace cannot be full without passing through the cross. The cross is needed for grace to have its full extent and strength. So some of you that are enjoying fleshly passion, the cross has not yet worked. So great, no, because grace is the ability to do God. He said, my strength is made perfect for you. My grace is sufficient for you. So grace and strength are connected. Then he says in Titus 2, verse 11, 12, he says, the grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching men to say no to ungodliness. So the fire and force of God that makes you say no to rubbish is grace. Grace is not license. Paul says, should we continue to say so that grace abounds? God forbid. Because some people think that they must catalyze sin so that grace will intensify. Paul says, so we should intentionally sin so that we provoke more grace. He said, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> he said, how are you that are dead to sin? You sin to provoke more grace. But the Bible says he giveth grace to the humble. So what intensifies grace and the other activity by which grace comes is not the abundance of sin. Though sin causes grace to much more abound, grace does not come in its multiplication. The multiplication of grace is through the knowledge of our Lord. He said grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our Lord. Not the abundance of sin. I know some people do that. They are fine, they are jaded, and they just do one error so that God will have mercy, they'll pray a prayer of rededication and they are back on track. It's like they just, where they've got into it, it's like the number line is ended, so let's just finish it. 
you understand? So when we end, we just do restart. Father, we start afresh. <laughs> but I like that song. Great change since I was born. Oh, great change since I met God. Ah, great Some people know the lyrics. Change. Since I met God, there is a great change. Since I listen, all the short short dress I used to wear, I wear them no more. All the judge judge I used to shave, I will shave them no more. All the this 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 I used to watch, I watch them no more. There is a great change since I met God. That is one of the law songs you can sing with joy. Hallelujah. It's a song of law, but it has grace in it. Amen. Now, <laughs> what am I trying to tell you? So, when grace comes, it gives you the ability to carry your cross. It gives you the ability to keep your body under the sentence of the cross. That's what grace is about. And I'm telling you something. There's a quality of life we live. We get interfered by the flesh many times. Today, I was sharing with them in a meeting. I told them something. Listen. You see, technically, hear me now. Some of you can drive your cars for 100 kilometers without fuel. But there's something you have engineered in your thoughts that prevents that possibility. I told them a story of Baba Lola, and I said to him that he went to this witch's convent. I've said it many times here. And he told the people to keep quiet. They are making noise whilst they were chanting. And the people obeyed them. And, and some people said the reason they were obeyed was because he, they turned and looked at Baba Lola, and Babalola had told his angel to hold his candle. So a man was telling people to be quiet, but his candle was suspended in the air. When he was there, he said, give me the candle. Then the candle came in his hands, and he walked away. So even wizards were afraid of him. <laughs> now, what is the extent to which this can happen? If he has the interference of the energies of the massaging of the flesh, even when he wants to tell the candle to suspend, condemnation will fight him first. Yeah. Number two, the desire for which reason he is giving the candle will feed from the carnality of the pleasures he enjoys in his body to try to prove a point to people without giving glory to God. This is why a lot of miracles can happen because we have trained our flesh to collect glory and feed on pleasure rather than God. So it's not that you can't do powerful things, but there's something sabotaging that possibility. Ah, all of you here can translate. Is it not the same Holy Ghost that came upon Philip that's in you? Is, this, is Philip's Holy Ghost different? Ah. What does Stephen have? Holy Ghost. As he was full of the Holy Ghost, full of, it is full, not half, full. Some of you are half of the Holy Ghost, half of faith, a little bit of doubt, a, 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 a beard, kakra, this one, kakra, you understand, you are mixing, by the time you realize, their faith is not complete. So you want to translate, but when you are translating, you are telling somebody to hold the camera and video you. Do you, you understand? So that by the time you come, you will put on your status, man of God translates in service. Now, I'm telling you something. Man of God, there was a time, I think there was this great prophet, um, Prophet Diallo. Every time he takes a picture, there was a, a picture light. He got to a point, I said, Lord, as soon as they take picture, I'm inspecting which light did they display. <laughs> because someone was doing it unconsciously, receiving that glory. We who saw it from inspiration wanted to mechanize it. We wanted the light to give an effect. So even if the thing is a rainbow, by reason of the refraction of the lens of the camera, immediately we put it up. The glory of God was upon my head. <laughs> it was the bomb. Right, right, right. So the bomb. It was not glory. That's what I'm trying to say. So the whole point is that the glory is in you. It's, it's there. It's in your spirit. But there's something preventing it. Jesus said, Peter, you don't even need to pray. Walk on water. You can do it like I'm walking. But Peter has not trained himself to focus. So as he's looking at Jesus, he looks away from Jesus. He sinks. That means that focus is the energy by which miracles are still sinned. Yeah. That's some of your most dangerous miracles are the ones you didn't plan to do it. Because your mind was not on yourself. It was on something else. I want to show you a scripture that's so powerful, connected to the crucified life. In Galatians 2.20, I'm just giving an introduction to what we'll do next week. Um, as for Baba, of course, it's his message, so these things will fly left, right, center. Tomorrow when you come, I'll give you a certain introduction. There are some people, when you see them on your billboard, don't preach. You understand? I know two of them personally, Dr. George and Baba Delvan. 
Those people, if you don't, they are so detailed to the truth, they don't care what you said. They will say the truth. That means if you said anything opposite, that's how you'll be sitting there. Oh my God. Oh, oh, they should have preached before me. Yet you have made mistake. And that's for Baba. He's a father, so he will call you out. He said that thing Adam was saying was not correct. Oh, he will say it to your face. <laughs> like, what were you saying? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> are you getting it? They are very dangerous people. No, there are not people that. Uh -huh. When you invite them, you should know that everything you have been saying must be consistent to what they say. Amen. Amen. So I don't want you to, I'm just giving you, he said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Now, this is where a lot of people get despondent. What is crucified with Christ and what lives? Yet not I. So who is talking? But Christ liveth in me. So where is the me that Christ is having access to live in? And the life I now live in the flesh, that means everything he's saying here, it is not the flesh. The eye is an, a different entity called the spirit. And the spirit says, my experience is that I'm on the cross. But that cross experience is what brings sabotage to the flesh. So that now the flesh is just a dress I operate my life through. Do you know that when do you preach or you, you, no, as of this generation, when you're giving you this example, it's always sexual because the generation, hey, tell your neighbor, Nyema Katadia, so people, people have covered things. As of it's not a joke. Oh. <laughs> people have put, yeah, 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 it's not a joke. Do you know the same mouth you used to say, I love you, Lord? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Thou know it. Thou know it. The same one. That means that, sir, the mouth <laughs> and your hands are the same instruments for worship, but they can be instruments for murder. So this thing you see, they are instruments. So that Paul said now in Romans chapter, um, chapter, chapter 6 verse 13, he said, neither yield ye your members. Your members is your body. Instruments of unrighteousness. That means that it is yielding this, it is about yielding. What this thing yields to is what instrument it becomes. So the same leg that goes to a brothel, that goes to a nightclub, that goes to whatever it is, is the same legs that will go for evangelism. You will not get a new one when you get born again. It's the same legs. The same legs that went to hell will be the same legs that can go to heaven. This is an instrument. So the issue is not your flesh. The issue is the things that animate this thing. That's it. And Galatians 5 tells us, I mentioned last week, 5.16 says that, walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desire. Now, if you look at what he's saying, the spirit is one place, the flesh is another place. So who is doing the walking? He didn't say, spirit is walking in the spirit. He said, walk in the spirit. That means the spirit is a place and the flesh is also a place. So there's something causing the walking. Are you here? Are you sure you're here? You see, when I mentioned last week, self-denial is the way by which I didn't get into the mundane examples. But Usain Bowles had to deny himself beggar and oily foods because he has a race to run. In fact, it was so serious that in the Olympic village, nobody even tries to bring their girlfriend there. So you deny your natural desires, even if you are married. That's why Uriah said, we are at battle. I can't go to Beshiba. We are fighting. I can't lose focus. Because that type of activity, when you do it, you can die tomorrow. Because by the time you get your mind is somewhere. Are you understanding? Yes, Be the, uh, Bathsheba is the same person who told David, uh, uh, Solomon, yield not your strength to a woman. Strength is gone. Strength. Oh, tell anybody the way I'm doing stiff is like you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a joke. Let me, let me preach my message. So he's saying, Walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So there is something that will... Listen, if you master this truth, there is nothing in this life that will be difficult or uneasy for you to reverse. And he says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. So there are three eyes here and they are representing different things. But the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So, and he's saying that if you live this life, verse 21, what will happen? 
I do not frustrate the grace of God. Because he's trying to say this, ladies and gentlemen. Colossians chapter 2 verse 17. There are a group of people, this is how they live their life. And I'll show you how they do it. Which is a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. The 18 next, he says, Let no man beguile in your reward of voluntary humility and in worshiping of angels and intruding into the things which they have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. So he's saying there are some people, their humility is voluntary. They will it. Paul is saying that these things, eh, using your best attitude to serve God, is not the way of God. That thing is, is honey. It will ferment. You have not been provoked enough, so you think you are humble. You've not seen some money, so you think you are humble. Yes, if it is not divinely orchestrated, you will be shocked at pride. And pride is not snobbing people. Pride is doing things without God. That's pride. So anything you want to do and even inquire from God, you're like, ah, we have $50,000 in our account. We can buy a land without asking God. That's pride. That's the way of king. Living life without God's interference. <laughs> Why am I saying what I'm trying to say? He's trying to bring your mind to something that if you can live holy, you can restrain yourself from sinning, you can hold yourself from evil, without the work of Christ, then Jesus didn't have to die. That means that Jesus wasted his death. That's why I said that if you frustrate the grace of God, then God's righteousness to us eh, was in vain. That means that you must accept the technology of the cross so that even what is natural to you must receive supernatural backing to be eternal. Naturally, you are not an argumentative person. But you need the backing of the Holy Ghost. Otherwise, you will get to heaven with your natural ability of having self-control. And God didn't get impressed. It means in that area of your life, you told Jesus that we don't need you. So listen to me. If you don't live the crucified life, anything you are doing well is still going to burn. Because it didn't come by the assistance of God. Some of you don't have women problem. So naturally, you are not a 10 women kind of person. You know some people, they are very... <laughs> yes. Naturally, they, 10 people, they are fine. They don't have a problem. Naturally. Some people, they are naturally strict. It's not because they are humble or spiritual. They are just strict. When you see them, iron face like... So usually on campus, that's the people you chose for president of SU and the rest because every day they come, the trousers is in the air. You must pray, you must pray. <laughs> spiritual by appearance. There's nothing spiritual about it. Naturally, some people, they have deep voice. When they start praying, boy, order, boy, matter, Yeah. your voice is light. I must get After that, <coughs> <laughs> Every two minutes you are drinking water. Then the people who have deep voice say you are not spiritual. Yeah? You lack capacity. You lack capacity. Yeah. So have you noticed those days when somebody is preaching? The Lord is going to bless you. He's going to do something mighty in your life. Amen. Oh, she's a very soft preacher. We like her message. It's tender and calm. <laughs> and when the man says, I see God. I, I, I see God. It's like, ah, that it's not fire. Screaming is not fire. Screaming is not fire. <laughs> Loud voice is not fire. <laughs> because a lot of the things is this. The moment you do it by your strength, the Bible says you'll be puffed up. That's why a lot of people come to God thinking their fasting can give them a miracle. Because when you did 60 days, so you feel that you deserve it. That's why you are wondering why somebody doesn't pray as much as you, but they have a better ministry. They don't preach deep things, but they have, they are queer. It's not like that. It's grace. It's grace. Stop using words. You, you frustrate your life. It's what? Stop using words. You what? Frustrate your life. And I'm going to show you something. Let's go back now to Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. Let me just summarize this thing. He says, and whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. 
And whosoever shall lose his life, for my sake shall find it. Next verse, 26. What, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You know we use this thing a lot of times for in, um, from evangelism. It's for the Christian. Oh, oh, what are you talking about? That word soul is the same word for 25, life. It's the same word. So it means, for whosoever will save his soul shall lose it. And for who <coughs> shall what also find it? This thing is a serious matter. If you didn't, I'm telling you. Because verse 24 starts it. Go to 24. He said, then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, put it in passion so you understand what I'm talking about. See what passion said. And Jesus said to his disciples, if any man truly want to follow me, you should at once completely reject and disown your own life. Welcome, sir. And you must be willing to share my cross and experiences as your own. And as you continually surrender to my ways. Now, this word that was used, deny me. Huh? It's the same word that was used in Matthew 26, verse 35. Let's go there. I'll show you something. How to? He is not saying that carrying the cross is deny yourself. He said you must first deny yourself before you are qualified to carry cross. What did he say? Let's read together. One to go. And Jesus said, when the cock crows three times, you shall deny me thrice. That word deny is the same word that is used for Matthew 16. That means that you must reject your flesh. You can see your flesh coming, but you will tell your flesh, I swear, I don't know you from anywhere. <laughs> but I swear, you are a stranger to me. That, the same way Jesus was betrayed by Peter and denied by, is how you deny your flesh. When you see your flesh beginning to my vibrate, you say, I don't know you, I swear. I deny you. I don't know you. Get that, that's how uh, my preaching. So if you don't know how to take the cross, it starts by this. Because I told you last week that if you don't deny yourself first, whilst you are carrying the cross, you'll be like Chinese Jesus. Do you know Chinese Jesus? You're on the cross and they've nailed you, pam, 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 pam. Don't all of a sudden someone say, ah, you call yourself the son of God. Come and save yourself. Jesus will just remove the nails and come. Slap you. There was a film like that. Yeah, Chinese Jesus. You seen that for me? He was on a cross. One of God. Chinese. They did the Chinese version of Jesus. He was on a cross like this. Then someone started, Yung chan, fun chan, fun chan. he got angry, came down. Wow. Hmm. Cool, 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 cool. Then after that, he went back like Wong Kong. Wow. Hey. This man can die. That's how he, he finished dealing, then went back on the cross. That, what does that mean? You are carrying the cross, but your flesh is still reacting. He said, You can't carry cross well. If, do you know what it meant for them to spit on Jesus? The Jews, the Bible said they spit, they spat to his face. That's what the psalmist said. He said the spat to his face was like a drench in water. And I like how the, I don't like, a, the trees have a word, a, a holy or something. But I like the gas on, a holy, a holy. That's the one you said, the person who, kum, ka, pa, early morning. And the Bible said his face was drenching with it. It means it was like, it, it was like okra soup. Yes. Go and read the Bible. Didn't I teach you on the cross? I showed you. His face was drenching with saliva and phlegm. Number two, he said, my beard is plucked out. The Jews pluck your beard out to signify shame. Because as a Jew, you keep a beard. Egyptians didn't like beards, so Joseph shaved. But Jews keep beards. So they had to pluck his face. So the people hold him in the morning. And how they do it was that the Sanhedrin will form a line side and side. And he will make a, it's called the walk of shame. As he's walking in the middle, this one slap him. And this, what the, when the Bible says smooth, it's not slap. No, smooth is not slap. Slap is pa. Smooth is poo. The back, <laughs> is the back of his knuckle like this. Bing. This one is giving bing. Some are wearing ring signet on his face. Bam, bam, bam. And they are pulling his face. That's why by the time he's climbing the cross, we can't even tell who his mother is. That statement is not a proverb. We cannot tell his generation means that they are beating him, man. Eh? If they don't tell you that's the Jesus, you ask who is that? He looks like the thieves. Then after all Jesus did, you say you can live holy by yourself. You don't understand God. You've missed, you've missed, the, you've missed the revelation. You've missed the revelation. So the crucified life is the life that actually validates his sacrifice. Listen to me. If you want to show that Jesus did a good job, accept the cross. 
accept the cross. Accept the life of the cross. But it starts with denying yourself. And yourself is the first indication of personality. In yourself is your will, your emotions, and your choices. It means the moment you take the cross, you have no will of your own again. You can't choose to go to a country without God telling you. That means that a lot of you, the reason why you are struggling to live the crucified life is because yourself didn't die enough. You were killing it. But you read the scripture well in Romans 8 verse 13. If ye through the spirit, not by yourself, you can't mortify the deeds of the flesh by giving restrictions. And so I will not watch this series. I will not watch this movie again. It's a lie. It won't work. You don't understand the cross. A few moments later, you will see where you'll be on this earth. It's through the spirit. So how then do I live the Christmas? Listen, I found the key many years ago. And the spirit life is, is the crucified life. When it comes to its full manifestation, it's called the resurrected life. Because you are no more living by your instincts again. That's where Colossians 2.19 comes in. And not holding the head. That means that every time the head tells you, you, are, you wake up in the morning, my first activity every morning is the activity of intimacy to contact new will, new feelings, new decisions. Without intimacy, my flesh will take over. Hmm. If you read it in the scripture, <laughs> that deny yourself and take up your cross, it speaks it in the present continuous tense. It means every day you take it. It means when you go to sleep in the morning, you wake up and take it again. You don't take it once though. The crucifixion was perfect once and for all. It was a work that was completely done. But to, to deny it is to a consistent taking. That means that Malik, every morning I wake up and I go like, Holy Spirit, you are worthy. Thou, Lord, creator of the world. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. Tell me your plan for today. Let me know where to go. Let me know who to meet and talk to. So I will live your life through this human body. That the faith of Christ will be my own. It's a new song, don't worry. So when you wake up in the morning, what happens is that as soon as you get your first assignment is to spend time with him. If you don't spend time with him, you have not denied yourself. And the moment you don't deny yourself, your cross will come off you. And you know what the cross is? Sufferings, you have power to escape. That's what is called cross. Because when a man is crucified, ladies and gentlemen, let me stand here so you can all see, he has nowhere to go. A crucified man is not in a hurry. You see the way you're always at haste and in haste. You are not crucified yet. So you have somewhere to go. God is not sending you. He that believeth shall not make haste. So you are here. Number two, the crucified man cannot look behind him because he is one directional. Looking unto Jesus ahead. It's a one directional look. That means the moment I descend, I look to the left, I look to the right, I'm asking, why is my friend going to America? This guy's ministry is starting. I can also start something. I am not crucified. It's not a crucified life. When you see a crucified man, they are in perfect condition. Nothing provokes or scares them. They can't even envy you because they, are, they understand they are dead. They are too alive. Holding the head. So every morning you wake up, find out what the master said. And someone is like, so prophet, if I need something to do now, now, and, why, and I need God to answer me, it's because you have not been doing it every day. That's why you are doing emergency action. If you do it every day, there are days God prepares his answer for you before you even ask. Because you, but you are always coming when you need answers. God was not designed as an ATM machine. God was designed for fellowship. Wave your hands to the Lord. Ask yourself a question. 
Was it from crucifixion you made the decisions you, you, you decided? I wonder how we'll meet the Lord on that day. But there was a man called Polycarp. One of the great apostles that had received the mantle from Ignatius. The little boy that was once believed to have sat on the lap of Jesus and said, don't let these ones leave me. And when the transmission from John the Beloved came to Ignatius, Ignatius transmitted to Polycarp. And when Polycarp received it, he had preached for many years and the council called for him that he must be killed and he must die. And he was at 80 and 6 years. And before he received that invitation, everyone was fleeing persecution. But an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Polycarp, I'm here to die. Can I tell you something? Matidom is for those who have fully embraced the cross. In fact, when you read the Bible in Matthew 16, 25, 4, 24 says, if you deny him and take your cross, the word take, the word take, in, yeah, that's it, take up your cross. That word take is the same word, lambano, used in Acts 1, verse 8. The way you receive the Holy Ghost is the way you receive your cross. You seize it by force. Because he knew that behind the cross is a joy that was set before him. So the Bible says he endured the cross, but actually he enjoyed it. He, actually in the Greek, he enjoyed the endurance. Have you seen somebody doing marathon training before? You can see they are struggling, but they are enjoying it. Because they know every mile is increasing their heart capacity. So they are struggling. They can't breathe, but they know that there is a joy that is set ahead of them. They understand something. There's a cross he has given us. We seize it. And the way you quickly seize it is when this thing has been fully denied. It's denied. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the days where God will appear to some people and say, I need you to enter Israel. You are like, Lord, they are fighting. He said, go. Because you see, this war has come to spread. You don't know. It's come to spread. I've seen Europe fall. I've seen it. I've seen bombs flying in Europe. I've just not declared it. I've seen it. I've seen it. It was like Europe was like a beautiful colored landscape and a tapestry. But all of a sudden, it became ashen, full of smoke. I said, Lord, what is happening? He said, they are going to bite more than they can chew. Because the ten kings representing the feet of Nebuchadnezzar's vision, which represents the ten kingdoms that came from Rome, will try to fight. And something is going to happen. The armies of the West, it will begin from the Midwest, that is Europe, before it jo America joins. You see this thing America is doing to help Israel? Watch it. They are going to switch. <laughs> so if you see the ships joining Israel, that's not it. What is coming? Russia and China will come. Antichrist will gather 200 million soldiers from the West. America included. So whatever is happening now is just, it's timings. And when I say America included, I'm not saying the people of America will agree. I'm saying the leaders of America will, will, will betray Israel. Oh, let me keep quiet and just, and, just, and just teach you something. Listen, light has come. <laughs> that means a child of God, if you want to rehearse well for your denial, remember how COVID made people not marry. COVID made you not go to work. COVID made you stay in the house for six months and you had to look to heaven for help. What is coming is worse than that. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm a prophet that describes what is coming. And what is coming is doom. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about it. No, it's a prayer you can't stop. When we pray for the world to cease, we are praying for God to, to reveal his work. Not to, what, is, what will happen will happen. Bruh, the Lord is more in a hurry to come than you. You don't want him to come because I want to marry, I want to have three children, I want to stay in Las Vegas. Uh, 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 uh. It's lack of spirituality. These are your dreams in life. So he says, what shall a man gain if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That same word is your life. Do you know something, ladies and gentlemen? Listen to me. Your flesh cannot inherit the kingdom. Listen to me well. 
Your flesh cannot inherit the kingdom. So at death, your flesh decays. So what goes up to heaven is the father receives spirits. Hebrews 12, 9. He is the father of all spirits. So all spirits return to him. But the spirit is the casing for the soul. That's why Hebrews 4, 12 says, the Holy Ghost needs the word of God to separate soul from spirit, which is like bone from marrow. So the two will get to heaven. God will not salute you for a strong spirit because he gave you that spirit. It is your soul that permitted the manifestation of his strength. It is your soul that will give an account. It is where you can remember. You will be asked to say, remember what you did. The soul. So God will not wipe your memory clean. Oh yes. That's why your works will follow you. Do you understand what that means? It means as you are walking, <laughs> okay, a bautise. All the things you did on earth. Of course, when God wipes away certain emotions, all tears are wiped away. You remove the bitterness and the pain out of the stories, but you can remember it as your annals. It follows you. This is the reason why when you see people in heaven, some people were crying, some people were angry, and they were in heaven because their emotions didn't change. You will carry that temperament you've not developed. You will carry it to Jesus. Actually, can I say something to you? It's not a developed spirit to give. The spirit was from God. Your soul was fresh. That's why I say be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the work God gives a Christian is for his soul to be renewed. When that work is completed, the level of renewal determines your high ranking position in heaven. That's why when Satan is coming for you, he does not come for your spirit. He goes for your soul. And when your soul is frustrated, he said, a bruise, how can a spirit be bruised? Your soul caused it. <laughs> Another message. Your spirit is from God, though. But your soul made your spirit weak. Because anytime you are feeding us, and the soul, let me say this this way, and we, we worship God, there we go, and come tomorrow for Baba Delva. You have to go and pick him from the airport. I think it's about landing. But this is the point. Your soul feeds on revelation. What your soul needs is revelation. So you see this generation of information is designed to replace revelation. When your soul is full of information, it struggles to access revelation. Because information is the foundation for which illumination is generated. Then when illumination comes, it breaks you down into revelation. That means that information you meditate on will produce action. So revelation is information that is acted on. That's what we call revelation. So what I'm trying to bring your mind to is this. All these things that you are seeing on TikTok. You see, Satan is, oh, let me, let me advise you. This is your phone you are struggling to put down. It's sabotaging the frequencies of God. I'm telling you. Don't joke. Forget it's even preaching. Stop it. Know where you go. Know what you feed on and come out. Set a time for it. Because if you don't do this, this crucified life will be hard. The last time I taught you something, I told you that. Where did you learn how to kiss a girl? It's in the world. Am I lying? Yeah. Did Jesus still you? They say keep one another for a holy kiss. Did they, <laughs> did they say kiss one another for a French kiss? Uh, man of God, they said it's a holy kiss. That means that whatever you learn, the things you learn, that is like, oh, sana, oh, 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 sorry, no. It's from the world. That means when you brought it to God, nothing washed it. Nothing transformed it. You kept it. That's why the Bible says, if they had been mindful, if they kept in memory the place they had come from, they will go back. Let me show you a secret today as a prophet. Anytime Satan wants you to go back to your past, he will tell you, reminisce. You start remembering your ex, how he held you, the parties you went. You have started something. You don't know. Oh, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. That's day one. Day two, it will come back. By the time you realize, when the iniquity of the Amorite is full, you start calling your ex. Hello, how far? <laughs> yeah. Mind. So how then do you now sabotage the memory of it? The moment you realize that you are ideal. 
There's nothing. Listen, there, that's why I said that the soul needs revelation. Anytime you are not feeding on revelation, it's blank. Satan will go and bring memory. So you are just lying there, oh, I'm tired. And that's the funny thing Christians do. Don't say you are tired with feeding revelation. The, <coughs> you are tired, so two weeks you have not touched your Bible. You are just watching binging movies. There is a memory coming back. It's crept, it's crept in silently. It's just a matter of time. Do you know why, excuse me to say, these people wore um, parachutes and jumped into a nation were ready to kill women, children, and babies. You know why? It's revelation. It was a satanic revelation. They were fed with it consistently. I pray that in our generation, God will give us indoctrinators. We need indoctrinators. People who can teach you how to pray, how to live, how to marry, how to keep your money, all from scriptures. It's not the preaching that makes you happy. It's instructions for every aspect of your life. Nobody will be able to stand us. That's why I told you last week that the moment we miss purpose, the power to outdo Satan is lost. Because Satan is doing evil with purpose. We are doing good without purpose. We are powerless. Why do you give? No purpose. Why do you sow a seed? No purpose. Why do you build an orphanage? No purpose. Why are you building a school? No purpose. So that you will take care of your children and your family. You see that type of purpose? Others are trying to influence educational system. You are trying to feed your family. How the purpose of God be strong? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to deny yourself. And don't go far. One of the things I've come to learn about our Christian work is God will always set you test by your brother by your side. You see this thing I said, deny yourself. It will start with your wife. It will start with your husband. It will start with your cousin. It will start with your best friend. They will be doing things you are like, ah, don't they know what they are doing? But they are doing it. And you are like, ah, deny. What does that mean? I'm not saying don't react. But I'm saying before you say, hey, let Jesus say, hey. Did you hear what I said? Because if I'm going to hold the head, before I slap you, Jesus must have slapped you. So my slapping is consistent with the slap of Christ. I cannot listen to what he said. He says, go and speak to the rock. Because where they stand now is called Kadesh. They are on holy ground. And here, they are not rebels again. Because when he was struck in Exodus 17, the beating of the rock, which signified the death of Christ, has purified Israel. No matter what they do, they are not rebels. But Moses came to call them rebels. God said, why will you call my people rebels? Number two, I said, speak. Why did you strike? Twice. Moses, no. The first one was called the rod of Moses. The second one was the rod of Aaron. There are two rods. Another message. That's why two rods represent two different assignments. He said, this one you speak. You don't strike. And God said, thou didst not sanctify me in your heart. That means that when you come to the place of carrying the cross, every smile, every anger, every discipline, every withdrawal, Every connection was sanctioned from heaven. You see this thing, excuse me to say, that this generation has learned from the world, connecting. That you have to network with the great. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, They don't do it like that. It's sanctioned from the Holy Ghost. The realms of God communicates this truth to you. You don't just get up. Yes, you are wonderful, sir, but I have not heard to be close. So we are still distant. We are not fighting, but I have no head. I'm holding the head, please. That's why a lot of you go ahead. He's a good brother. He's a Christian, so I want to do business with him. Then bang, 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 boof, you are angry. What? You had no revelation about the matter. You went ahead. Holding the head. Holding the head. I love you like praising people without knowing them. You know their internet life. So that, you see, so the same you that praised that man of God, when you hear a scandal, you are the first to avoid him. How can you live like that? You must live by revelation. So by the time you are hearing scandals, God said, I knew it before I told you to connect. Stay there. Oh, yes. You don't, you don't. Listen, that's why one of my daughters told me something. I said, Daddy, I've realized that <laughs> what we can't check. They can talk about man of God. Oh, hey, man of God, we've seen this person. We see, and they said, I'm not interested. 
Not because I hate men of God. If I've not heard, every, every human being has their human side. You understand? They are human beings. So they are human sides. So if I don't hear, it means we will collide at your human level. It was not God who connected us. We will collide. We will collide. So ladies and gentlemen, when you wake up in the morning, hold the head. I'll give you one last story. I had very wonderful bosses when I was working. One was very upfront and direct. One, others were cool, calm, collected. And one was very upfront and direct. I didn't like his style. So I told God, God, take him out of office. I prayed that prayer one month, six weeks. In fact, two months and two weeks consistently. God said, I'm not going to change him. I said, what do you mean? He said, did you not read Nebuchadnezzar was my servant? Pharaoh was my servant. Sometimes the people you don't like are the people I'll use for you. So stay there. You see, the way your flesh is so alive, many of the people you say God should take them away, it's your flesh, it's not God. You want your ex to die, he won't die, he'll marry. Your ex will marry, have beautiful children to the glory of God. They will not die. Stop that prayer. It's a waste of time. What is the meaning of that? Because it's your ex, it should be everybody's ex. He is your ex, not the whole world's ex. Eh? You don't like this brother. And he did something to you. So because of that, hello, hi. And because of that, me too, I shouldn't like him. It doesn't work like that, bruh. It doesn't work like that. If you had your, you have your revelation. That's why me personally, you can come and tell me I'm a man of God. Just say, mm, 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 okay, okay. Whatever I know about him, I'll never tell you. Because perhaps it is me he did it to. He might not do it to you. So have your personal experience. <laughs> I am not the deliverer of your soul. The Lord is... If, if you have the Holy Ghost and you are, you are befriending somebody, it's not my job to tell you. It's the Lord who will show you. Huh? Am I lying? I know somebody is all religious right now. So prophet, if you see your brother going to hell, hey, he's the Lord's soul, not my soul. Did I die for him? <laughs> that means that if the only time I'll tell you that please don't connect is the Lord warned me. I will not tell you because of my personal experience. Unless the Lord wants me that tell that gentleman to watch out. That's the only time I'll talk. If he's not said it, I will not use my... It's like that. Somebody can come to you and say, oh, Prophet, please, this is my beloved. Oh, wonderful. And she's very cold. So because she's cold, you go and sit there and say, I don't think she's the will of God for your life. Do you understand? That's why many times, excuse me to say, sometimes pastors are deceived. Because the girl comes, oh, man of God, thank you so much. I love your ministry. I've been listening to your thing. And he's deceiving you. Then you say, oh, go ahead. You are marrying a witch. <laughs> because she's nice to you, you are deceived. But some of you must not... When you come, ah, I can read. One of the lessons I've learned in life is when somebody is overly nice, it's overcompensation. Yeah. There is something you are covering up. Yes, yes, man of God, please, I salute you. Yes, please, sir. Oh, oh. Then it's like, oh, man of God, you are the purpose and we are the, hey. The moment the person says, you, you see, when you learn the language of the mature, do you understand? The moment someone, you are the purpose, you have gone ahead. You should know in their house they have been measuring you. Because when did we come to the place where you are saying, I'm the papa? And we are the small boys. How? It's not the language you use. Cobra people. Who, who is that cobra? It's a song. It's a cobra. Do you know the full song? Part of it, a part of it. Anybody be a yeah, cobra? <laughs> I have to find that song. But every time I'm preaching, oh yeah, cobra. I don't want to see. They are cobra. It's a good song. <laughs> the prophet says it's a good song. <laughs> Nipani be a cobra. <laughs> Philip, you know that song. <laughs> I think before you close, you will give us a worship. <laughs> you will sing his worship style. Oh, Nipe be a hey, yeah, cobra. <laughs> we'll sing his worship line. <laughs> Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When you deny yourself, you can take up your cross. What that means is that the moment you take up your cross, you have entered into life that is so rich. At that place, everything that made you choose wrongly is dead. Your choices will always be right. And I'm telling you something. One year, two years, three years will prove you always make the right choices. I don't choose because I'm a prophet. I choose because the flesh, I have to deny myself. And some of you don't even know the voice of your flesh. So you, 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 you can hear three voices and you don't know which one is God because... You have been so accustomed to your way, you don't even know when your flesh is talking. Can I show you a secret today? 
When God is training you to hear him and carry your cross, the initial instructions are conflicting to what you want. That's how to know. Especially when you've trained yourself to pleasure your flesh and your, your desires. God will give you consistent instructions against it. So that by the time you get there, you can see the opposite side. Then when you pray, Lord, there's a ministry you have to go and preach at. Kindora Dingra Satolobos. Sandama. Let me show you how the flesh looks. As soon as the flesh starts talking, oh, that stage is powerful. Soon came You know, when you went to Kolebu, they gave you 50 Ghana. But when you and don't see more. For the people I greet you, eh? We are brothers and sisters in the Lord. Don't get angry, it's an example. But you see, this man of God, when you go to a stage, at least thousand dollars. So everything you are choosing is what you want. But listen to this. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means wants are one of the dangerous places to play when you are trying to crucify yourself. He didn't say you shall not need. You shall not want. God is bringing you a man to marry. But I want a fair guy. God said he is dark. Do you need darkness in your life? You need, uh, you need a dark man in your life. Listen to what I'm saying. So you can see that people have, also people have met their husbands. But they are using what they want. And you hear Christians ask the question. And I realize that it is the height of the worship of self. Not the denial of it. That says that, so what about what I want in the will of God? In the will of God, your wishes and your wants are null and void. In the will of God, your will is treason. So Jesus said, not my will. Even Jesus had the purest will. His will was akin to the will of the Godhead. But even in the same operation. There can't be two good wills. Right. It must be one. Yes. So no matter how your will is good, if it is not what God is saying, it is a dangerous action. So you see, this generation, what about what I want? How about my desires? Hey, hey, start early. Crucify this your flesh so that your desires and his desires will fuse. That's the day you start thinking, God's like, Lord, I don't want to go. God will say, you're right, don't go. I'll show you a story one, and then we pray. I was going to preach somewhere some time ago. I, had, I was near breaking down. And I told the man of God that the Holy Ghost told me I can't come because my body will not allow it. He said, man of God, please. We've done posters. Please come. I said, man of God, I'm sorry I can't make it. He said, no, man of God. The fly, people are desiring your coming. I said, is that so? He said, yes. So I was in bed and I began. You know, there's a way people can convince you. Forget what the Holy Ghost has been saying. I'm like, Lord, I can still go. Then all of a sudden, I said, man of God, I, I don't think I can go. Then I heard the Holy Ghost said, don't try to go and miss out on something you will later regret. That type of statement means that you can go and the Lord will cause water to come out of the rock. Because God is so jealous to bless his people. Yeah. Even donkeys will prophesy. Yeah. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Yeah. Even Balaam, God will talk to Balaam. He has collected money to enter into witchcraft, yet God will have to meet him. That, hey, I know you have collected money to do witchcraft. I know you know the engineering of burnt offerings and sacrifices. You go and open it. And when you open it, the heavens have to answer you. But I'm telling you something. Don't try to prophesy against my people. I've warned you. So Balaam is using witchcraft, but he can't, he can't disobey God. That's why you don't measure prophetic accuracy from details. You measure prophetic accuracy from source. It is the source of the prophet that makes him accurate, not the details of the prophet. Yes. Hallelujah. I prophesied to somebody one day about how his mother died and all the things. He told me that they were going to do funeral and the family went to the shrine and they poured carries. He said, every prophet, is everything you said they said? I said, God, how come? He said, yes, it's not the information that separates you from a, a, a fetish priest. They can see the same thing. Did you not hear the pharaoh, pharaoh's magicians? They turn st stick to rod, they cause blood to turn to... The same thing Moses was doing until they got to the lies and the thing shift. It's a source. It's not, it's not what you are doing. Because the generation are deceived with accuracy. We don't know how to measure source. Why can't we measure source? 
The flesh. The flesh. Do you know the painful part? We are using Nollywood litmus test to measure how to test the spirit. So you are confused. Ah, if they are false prophets, how are they speaking in tongues? If they are false prophets, how can they say the name of Jesus? Because those days, Kanayo, Kanayo, say, in the name of G, Tendosh. So it's like, <laughs> that, that's how you measure a false prophet. A prophet who can't say Jesus. You are deceived. Go and read the Bible yourself. You see, when you don't read the Bible, these are the things you struggle with. Some of you think the Bible is, the Bible under your pillow is what to deliver you from bad dreams. I tell you. It's the Bible in your spirit, not under your pillow. Yeah. Are you here with me? Very serious. Don't get into something you're not ready. You're not ready for. So, this story I was talking about, I was, I, where was I about the story? Yes, not going for the program. So this man of God now called me and said, man of God, we still need you to come. You know what we'll do? Don't preach. Just appear. And then we'll put a chair in the front. And you'll sit down. And I said, well, how will I minister to you? I said, we'll lift you. We'll just stretch your hand. Look, everything my flesh said, go, go, go. Something, it's like, can you imagine the picture? Man of God, you are in a palanquin, you are saying, take it. And people are falling down. Even the people carry you, fall down. <laughs> you will learn lesson. <laughs> take it. And it's like, it looks so nice. That's why I heard the Lord tell me, he says, you see how your flesh likes it? That's not me. That means that sometimes your flesh will resist disappointing people. It's not God. In following God and the cross, disappointing people is part of the journey. You can't be a yes man, even in ministry. The fact that we should go and preach somewhere does not mean the will of God. He said the spirit of Jesus withstood Paul that he should not go to Bithynia. The spirit of Jesus. It takes a man who has been crucified to know when Jesus says, this meeting is not your meeting. Shut it down and leave. It takes the spirit of Jesus. You have to understand some things. Where we are getting to, your antennas must be sharp. Because you must know which mountain to go and hide in. You must know which business to invest in. You must know which business to put your money in. You see, cryptocurrency is beautiful. It's come to crash bad. Bad. Dangerous. That economic meltdown, it is going to be e-currency. And when it crashes, let me tell you something. The International Monetary Fund will have one international currency. They will now regulate how much anybody can have in their account. Watch it. The world is going to be a socialist world. A man will control your affairs and your finances. That's why he calls it the number of a beast and the number of a man. It is for commerce. You cannot trade or be trading. It means without, when you do, it will show in the international database. He's in that bush. <laughs> no, man of God. Long ago, can I show you a secret? Julius Caesar conquered Asia and built roads and ship channels. That is the same roads and channels Paul used to preach. Can I show you today? All this GPS data collection is still the channels that the Antichrist will use to track people. Don't be deceived. It's all machinery. Do you know today, they can track your data print 10 times faster than before COVID. Because you see, you thought they were locking us down, but they were locking us down to push us online. Don't deceive yourself. So now a lot of you have become online people. You are watching me, you could have been here. <laughs> Everything I watch online, I watch online. I greet you, dear online person. You are in Ghana. I, I greet the American people. We greet Diaspora Church, whatever you are in the world. But you that you are in Ghana, you are watching me. Would you not be here? Hey. Hey. Online. Online. Online church members. I greet you. Yeah. Go and check it. That is why, sir, today there's a business that is legit. Do you know the business? They pay you to watch YouTube videos. Think about it. What type of payment is that? They pay you to waste your day. Watching people do exercise, cooking, doing hair, bathing, gardening, and they'll say, collect $200. Don't you think they are creating 
And you don't even realize that it's a, it's a, it's a bait. You are just biting it. Prophet, by the way, yeah, I'm not saying don't go online. I'm saying that be crucified before you get there. I'm not saying don't go to America. Be crucified. Look, you have no idea. In America, the spirit of bipolar, they are just junction after junction. <laughs> you say you came to America sane, but bipolar will just hug you one morning. That's why you just be walking. <laughs> Something has happened. Something has hugged you. Germany, eh? Germany is depression. Yeah, he was a pastor in Germany. It's an entity. You are just walking, no, and you are not speaking in tongues. One to whom girl be to whom to to whom from to whom do you belong to? Then the angels, the, the demons of depression will say, He is in to whom to, to whom from. Be played a bit. To whom does it belong to? Then you come to whom to to whom from to whom do you belong to? To whom to? And you are just watching the girl, like, hey, I brought four girls here, nice. Oh, have cast girls define you. To whom to to whom from to whom do you belong to? To whom to to whom from? To whom do the, the person's bomb mom is asking you a question? To whom do you belong to? To whom to to whom from? To whom do you? And you are also watching it. Then the spirit of depression, they are standing by the wall. As you are going, to whom to to whom for? When the spirit starts dancing, it means they have already got you. To whom do you belong to? You have already gone. By the time you stand, they will hug you. All of a sudden, you can't sleep at night. You didn't come to America like that. You didn't come to Germany like that, but something has taken over. You can't pray again. Tongues is hard. Now you are beginning to question if God exists. Church is more important. Then you are starting to question the very fundamentals that even gave you visa to go to America. Because something has hugged you. There's an entity. You understand that Daniel prayed every day because he understood there was a spirit in charge. There was a spirit in charge. The area you are staying, there's a spirit in charge. I told you of some crows that came to my area. For I dealt with the crows. Now the crow had to go and get reinforcement. You can ask my wife. Yes, now they appear three. Now when they appear three or something, they've moved from the pole they meet on. Now they meet on a different pole. I said, this thing cannot stop. It will not stop. I, I, no, when we are doing 21 day fasting, it's firing from my house. Midnight, katakotaya, rasa kataba. We, we, we sabotage communication lines. And we are the landlord. You see, so can I show you something? The day you get crucified, you don't enter a plane. You don't choose Trasaco because it's a nice neighborhood. You choose it because your flesh is so dead, the angels of government responsible for relocation have told you that the door for your house in Trasaco is open. Yes. Come. Yes, yes, yes. If you are only sensitive, you understand why even Jesus, who was God's son, had to run. Yeah. And time will fail me to talk about his journeys in Egypt. There is a record. Even in Egypt, Herod heard he had fled. They were tracking them there. For the number of years they were there. Yes, that's why an angel came to tell them that the one who seeks you is dead. It means even in Egypt, they were sending spies. Because remember, at that time, Egypt had come under the influence of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. So it was under Roman governorship. So Herod could send proconsuls to investigate the whereabouts of Jesus Christ. Even in Egypt, there's a record that not less than 20 places Jesus was hiding. Come out, hide here, come out. And he's the son of God. You don't understand government. That's why you do anything anyhow. It's time for the Lord to crucify When he crucifies you, your mother can say something and you keep quiet. Yes, mommy. Because you can see government. Mommy is a government in your life. Huh? <laughs> you have no idea. Your mother. No, even if you don't agree with her, smile. Do you know smile and wave? Go and watch Madagascar. Smile and wave. Smile and wave. Yes, mommy. Thank you very much. Yes, mommy. At your age, you don't need to argue with your mother. Shabi, if you say, go and buy, go and jump, go and look for a boy, don't get. So, mommy, I'm trying you. So have you fallen? Mommy, I'm trying. I'm doing my best. Hey, let's keep praying. Yes, mommy. Yes. Don't say, mommy, that's in your No, it's not time to fight. Just tell him, mommy, I'm trying. That's one of the things I learned. The wisdom of the elders. Agree with your adversary. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> you always fight. And your mother is not somebody you want to argue with because they will start saying certain things. I gave birth to you. How would you? Then your heart is beginning to be afraid. Keep quiet. I say, yes, mommy. We are praying. We are believing God. It will work. Hallelujah, mommy. Thank you very much, mommy. The Lord will do it. That's all. It's time to live the crucified life. But you need the Holy Spirit to do it every day. 
You need the Holy Spirit every day. So when you say, draw me nearer, draw me nearer, Lord, draw me nearer, nearer to thee, it's not a song of absent revelation. Songs 1 4 says, draw me and we shall come running. If the Lord does not draw you, you can't find him. He is the way. The drawing for intimacy is a daily affair. Love is a diminishable and perishable commodity. Because every time you spend time with something, you have desired it. So if you leave God and you go to work, a little bit of your heart has gone to work. So in the morning, you need to redirect it. So you say, Lord, draw me. Lord, draw me. No wonder the psalmist said in Psalm 80 verse 18, quicken us, O Lord, and we shall call upon you. You need quickening to call on him. Have you noticed you know you have to pray, but you can't pray. Pray this prayer. Quicken me, Lord, that I can call upon you. And when the Lord quickens you, Sundera nale mundera dish. Hey, quickening is nice. Oh. Yesterday I slept around 4.35. And as I was about to sleep, I was just lying in bed. And I sat on my bed. Then I began to speak. Pure Ekwapen. I knew it was the Holy Ghost who had taken over. Because I don't speak Ekwapen. I'm half fancy, half ever. My ever is one person. <laughs> and my fancy is 70. Yes. So I don't speak ever at all. Any way I understand is by the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? So when they say, I say, hey, amen. I say, amen. I say, amen. I don't say, eh. But the whole point is that in that operation, I began to speak a I knew it was the Holy Ghost. And I began to feel the life of God. And I said, hey, ah, I can't say recording. Ah, oh, oh, Gwankobia, oh, yes, eh. It was just coming, yum, yum, yum. I said, ah, more, pure, pure, pure. Oh, more, 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 more. Wakasa, 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 wakasa. I said, Holy Ghost, pure, money, yeah, money, yeah, wakasa, wakasa. I knew it was the Holy Ghost talking. But what was that? As soon as he came alive, asuka pile lene. Listen, some of your dull moments, it can't come by your own generator. The fuel is finished. When you start it, smoke comes. That's where you start. Ta 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 there's a tongue when you pray, you feel goosebumps. You know that something has taken over. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that is the realm you can go 10 hours. Something, you know, you know have you ever prayed that you know this life, you don't stop? You won't go to work today. The thing is gone. That's the realm. Imagine you do this every day. Imagine you do this anytime. Imagine you do it anywhere. They turn to you in the office and you say, sir, excuse me, I want to use the washroom. Don't kneel there. Don't kneel there. Understand? Don't kneel. Don't kneel your washroom. <laughs> Just stand there and speak. Adora Baba. Adora Bazagra Dala Bazado. That's not a place to kneel down. Hallelujah. Even the you will it will desecrate your prayers. Don't kneel down. Just walk up and now. Makota Dibrataka. Sondele Mesandro Bosun. When we get to magnify God, I will now explain to you the desire of God through Joseph. Joseph became the culture of God. He became the petriges of God. So that the Bible says the only thing that when they lifted, the cloud appeared was the ark. Only Joseph's bones could do the same thing. Exodus 13, the Bible said they lifted the bones of Joseph two verses later and the cloud appeared. That means a man had embodied God. This man accept his childhood dream of the bush and the sheaves and the stars. There is no record Joseph dreamt. There is no record that the Lord explained the dream of Pharaoh to Joseph. But Joseph knew as God. In fact, it was real time. Pharaoh, tell me your dream. He didn't say, give me two days. Daniel had to go and ask. Joseph stood there and said, this is the meaning of your dream. Do you know the shocking thing? In Genesis 39 verse 2, they saw a man in chains. And a foreigner who does not believe in God said, Yahweh Elohim was with Joseph. And Yahweh reveals himself to only the Jews. Yeah. But Potiphar could see Yahweh. So he said he is a prosperous. A man in chains was called prosperous. 
Prosperity is God. Not cash. God. It's not cash. God. How much of God you carry is your prosperity. So when we sing that song, there's a light that I see in spite of the darkness that surrounds me and the light that I see listen, it comes alive every time I hear your voice so when God speaks to you, a light comes why? he said in that day your teacher shall hide themselves from you but you shall hear a voice behind you this is the way Walk in it is the light. It shows you the path. He said, the word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my, it's a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. He said, decree a thing that shall be established unto you and the Lord shall cause light to shine on your way. When he comes, look, I know how to come out of sickness. So you must learn it. Find light. As you lie in bed, Monday, I fake the jigda aroma. Because if you speak English, your articulation is not sanctified enough. The first thing God touched was your lips. Because it was the first thing that put you in trouble in the first place. Man's greatest indictment, four of it spoke about the mouth. Romans chapter 3 from 12 to 14. One, the tongue, the throat, the lips, and their mouth. He said their throat is like an open sepulcher. Their lips is like apps. He said their tongue hides poison. So there are four things that man does. It's what took you into problem. That is why the first thing God touched in redemption was your tongue. Hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost came, it was the tongue he touched first. Because it's the very thing that took, he said the tongue is a world of iniquity. Nobody has been able to tame it. Tonight, I tell you something. Anytime you are in predicaments, you are struggling for an addiction you are struggling with, stop praying English. Because the very thing you are struggling with was brought by that lips. You need to enter the sanctified language. Vum ruha bazengush. Rehimetandos, Rehimetandos, Rehimetandos. All of a sudden, he's repeating your spirit. Rehimetandos, Rehimetandos, Rehimetandos. He come, Iska, Ushke, Maharia Tombe. And all of a sudden, something is coming alive. Something is coming alive. Why are you standing in this confusion for this long time? Why don't you know whether to turn left or right? Because you have not yet heard the voice. But the voice of the Lord, it comes upon many waters. The voice of the Lord, it parted the wilderness. The voice of the Lord, it quenches the flames. The voice of the Lord, it shakes the wilderness. Yea, the wilderness of Kadesh Barnea. I speak to somebody. It is time to walk in crucifixion it is time to wear the crucified life it is time to wear and deny yourself lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice wherever you are lift your voice wherever you are lift your voice wherever you are we who are in this body do groan we groan we groan and yonder break it up he said likewise the spirit help it the limitations of our flesh with groanings which cannot be altered because he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit so he maketh intercession according to the will of God it is in groaning we escape the limitations of this fleshly soulish life we escape we escape corruption I 
am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but the life I now live. I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. I I do not frustrate the grace of God. Lest if righteousness came without the law, then Christ, if righteousness came by the law, then Christ died in vain. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? How can you begin in the spirit and be made perfect in the flesh? He that worketh miracles, hey, and do a signs, do what ye by the law or by the hearing of faith. I am not begging the God of I am the Lord, by the Holy Ghost, I deny myself. By the Holy Ghost, I deny Adam. By the Holy Ghost, I deny Adam of myself. Lift your voice to him. Lift your voice to him. Deny yourself. The way Peter denied Jesus. Deny yourself. Say to yourself. Say to your passions. Say to your desires. Say to your failure. Say to your anxiety. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't recognize you. I've never been with you before. Reignite the fire. Somebody reignite the fire. Put your will on the altar. Put your choice on the altar. Put your desire on the altar. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Holy bele bese prepe kote pa. Hey ya dush kapa da. Ela la 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 koria taba. Ela mountain ten ten me kota. Something is happening. Helicopayash. Moat, 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 moat. Come out of your previous form. Come out of your limited form. Come out of your weak form and assume the form of God. We mount, we mount, we mount from the old layers. We enter the new form of Christ.
I'm showing you how to deny yourself. Perhaps you might have fallen already. But the next time you see yourself on the ground, tell your body, I'm shocked you did this. Record. That's not me. A lot of you, the problem is that you accepted that that's you. And there's nothing you can do about it. No. Deny it. Deny any relationship with it. Deny any connection with your flesh. I don't know you. This lie is not who I am. <laughs> now you are the friend of life. I didn't say deny to your friend. I said deny to yourself. You understand? Be surprised that, ah, this is not you. Boy, this is not you. You can't be lying like this. It's not you. It's not you. You are the very bread of life. And there is no one, no one has the Lord. Here on earth, here on earth, and in the heavens above.
friend has to lay his life down for him. Beloved, what manner of love is this? That we should be called the sons of God. Listen, I know you are believing for a marriage. You are believing for a good house, a good car. But Father, oh, what love you have, you have lavished. God calls me here to share me I come to do something so powerful. It's my special personal person. We give thanks and we give praise to God. God taught Ephesus not to make a big deal. A man of God didn't come for a program. We will be happy in it. For all you've done for us, we give thanks. Oh, we give thanks. We give thanks. And we give praise. We give praise. Say for
to Jesus Christ. Do you know you are blessed? Yes. Do you believe you are blessed? Oh, yes. uh, before we leave, I just want uh, our dear prophet to just say a word to us and then receive blessings and go, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Can I hear some fire in your hallelujah? Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. No, this shout, I think I want to go back to Deutschland. I want to go back to... Somebody give the Lord a shout of... Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Shout fire, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I wasn't invited. I invited myself because I'm a part of this family. And so I got up by the spirit and God said, go to Ephesus. So I messaged your prophet, said, prophet, I'm coming. And then he said, oh, his wife is buried. I said, hallelujah. Then I am coming. And so I'm here. And when I was coming, uh, the Lord showed me a vision, which is not for your hearing. And so... Uh, <laughs> When, when I saw that vision, then we decided to bring a gift also. So the gift was double. So Mama D, if you can please do me the honors. This is from my wife and I. This is from Believing Church Germany. This is from Kratos Ghana. Believing Ecclesia United Denominations all over the place. We honor you. Is that how you celebrate your first lady? Hallelujah. You know, Prophet, one of my covenant brothers, uh, that is uh, Pastor William Boateng in Amsterdam, the wife is called Mama D. And my favorite prophet in Ghana, Prophet Julius, wife is also called Mama D. <laughs> so, from my wife and I and from the church, we love you. We appreciate you so much. I don't take the grace of God on your life, on the life of the prophet for granted. I, I, you know, when I come here, I don't come here as a prophet. I come here to learn, to fellowship. And so we love you dearly. And from my wife, Rosemary, myself, Kratos, Ghana, the whole church, we say happy birthday to you. Amen. God bless you. to Jesus. Hey, say, say, say that I love you. I really love you, Lord. Say that I love, say that I love you. I really love you, Lord. One more time, one more time. Say Expect a live video from Baba Chris Delvan tonight. He'll be greeting you, telling you that tomorrow, exactly at 5.30, we are here again to receive from the fathers. And like I said, our fathers will be joining us, different men of God will be joining us. Come on time. I mean, that one is not, I'm not preaching. So straight where she prays, we give him the mic. He has his guitar, whether he sings, he speaks, he, he prophesies. We just flow with Baba Delvan style. Hallelujah. Who is bringing somebody from the office? Who is bringing somebody from the office? 
Don't come alone. Bring somebody from the office. The way you have not read means you, are, you yourself you are not coming. Well, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. To the glory of God, my team know that it's been since 2018, except the first time I counted the people who started Ephesus in my house, eight members. I have never done head counts before. They know if we are only 15 that show up, I don't have a problem. I understand too many spiritual things for numbers to affect. It's no, 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 no. There will be an outpouring. Don't miss it. I know what I'm talking about. There will be a dangerous outpouring. And you don't want to miss it for anything. So if I were you, come with a brother, come with a sister. Let's not miss tomorrow's encounter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the strength of Yahweh, the operations of the majesty of the Spirit, elevate and strengthen you in every sphere of your life. Walk in the denial of yourself and carry that cross that will perfect you into the manifestation of the glory that is awaiting you. I bless you with the blessings of him that suffered for us and gave us fellowship in the sufferings of Christ. Walk in total dominion. Anything that once harassed your flesh by this crucifixion, you are free from it in Jesus' name. Anything that once made you limited as a man by the cross, you are free from it in Jesus' name. I bless you the blessings of him that died and rose on the third day and triumphantly resurrected and ascended. Go in peace and go in the strength of Yahweh. We truly really love you. The grace and blessings of God. When you, when, it's a long time some of you I saw you. Just say hello, hi, the Lord bless you. I've been preaching since morning. See, today. Yes. Amen. Amen. Love you all. I love you. Hey, one, one. Hey, one, one. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I've realized the mystery of iniquity that is at work in the earth. I realize not submitting to you is allowing iniquity to work in me. Therefore, tonight I repent. I yield my member even as your instrument. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Today, I enter the family of God because of your sacrifice. Thank you for accepting me and cleansing all my sins and my unrighteousness. In Jesus' name, Amen. This life will finish me. Oh,